Hey, happy Friday. I'm recording this episode today and releasing it in the same day, which doesn't always happen. So that's fun. I had such a great time talking with Patrick last week. The audio, I was so happy with how it sounded because he had a mic because he has his own podcast. So that was really fun to have a high quality episode again. Sometimes the Zoom is a little funkier, but hey, still amazing that the podcast can exist virtually. And he talked about losing his brother to hemophilia, which is a bleeding disorder, and also the ways that he combines entertainment, art, and healthcare. He is able to advocate for people with bleeding disorders in a way that incorporates entertainment and the social change that stems from that. I'm just so impressed with people that have dedicated their lives to making a difference all day, every day, like Patrick. I thought it was a really great episode. And also exploring the vulnerability of men and their ideas and perceptions around death and being open and vulnerable. He does a wonderful job explaining all of that. So check that out if you have not already. Today, I just wanted to reference a few grief recommendations. I realize that they're prevalent in my mind and I do mention them here and there, but just to have them in one place. So the first recommendation I have is the dinner party. I've been referring these people out for several years now. They're offering free virtual grief groups for people in their 20s to 40s who have lost someone. Again, they are offering free virtual grief groups. This is the most incredible thing. If you have lost someone or if you know someone who has lost someone and don't know where to go, I say run over to your bedroom or couch where you can now have your own virtual grief group. They set it up for you. You sign up for the group that interests you. And a lot of the groups meet generally monthly, sometimes every other month, sometimes every other week. There's options. And you just connect with other people for a couple hours who have lost someone in your same position. I've been hosting a grief group for people who have lost a parent. And there are also groups specific to parents, specific to siblings, which I think is so important because I know there's a big difference in those kinds of losses. There are groups specific to those who are black, indigenous, and people of color to share those experiences. There's also suicide affinity tables and specific kinds of loss affinity tables. There's also a best friend or friend group if you've lost a friend, as that's a different kind of loss, as we know. So I am thrilled about these groups. I love hosting one, but there's many, many options. You don't have to be in like mine. You're like, I didn't want to be in yours anyway. I get it. But truly, thedinnerparty.com. They're on Instagram at the dinner party. Wow. What a life changer. My next resource is Laurel Box. Laurel Boxes are boxes that you can send to someone when they have lost someone. So if you don't know what kind of gift you want to go for, Laurel Box is a great bet because they have packaged really nice and thoughtful gifts specific to kinds of losses. So the losses that they cover are bereaved mothers, miscarriage, infertility, spouse, family and friends, and then difficult season. Difficult season is more of a general hard time in someone's life. I like that they have infertility and miscarriage because while I think those losses are so different than typically what I talk about, I think they're very common and very important things to explore and something that a lot of women go through. So I'm glad that they have boxes specific to those. You can also curate your own box if you don't necessarily like every single thing that they have. But there's little keepsakes and jewelry, reflection pieces, candles, self-care items. You can give someone a subscription so they will receive a box on the date of the loss of their person along with their person's birthday along with the person's anniversary of their death, et cetera. Or you can just gift them one box at a time. And I read up on these women and they are so sweet and invested and professional. I'm giving them a shout out already. Yay. Next up, we have Modern Loss. Modern Loss is an online community. You can follow them at Modern Loss. But they also specifically have a book that came out, which is short stories. Think Chicken Soup for the Soul, if you read those back in the day. And it's different stories about loss. I actually think a lot of the stories are not necessarily as many are about parents or siblings, 
as I had perhaps thought it would, there are lots of losses covered. So I like the diversity. I like the different kinds of losses that are being explored. I think that's really important to share the feelings that come up around things like the loss of a neighbor or the loss of your mom's friend or the loss of a teacher. So I would probably recommend this book specifically to those who are newer to loss or they've lost someone who's a friend of a friend or maybe something one step removed is my first recommendation. So beginners are certainly welcome, as it says on their site. And in general, if you like reading about other people's losses, definitely check out this book and or their online community with lots of blog posts, again, sharing different kinds of losses. And last but not least for today, I wanted to shout out Lantern, which is a free set of checklists and to-dos when you're planning for the end of life. It is specifically designed by younger people for younger people. Many people on the website, I think they said, I think they said about 50% of the people on the site are under 40 planning. So whether you are planning the loss of a parent, it could be a grandparent, it could be a friend, it could be for yourself. They walk you through all the things that you would perhaps want to think about before experiencing the loss itself. While it may seem very heavy to do that, I think it is so important to explore these nuances before that person is no longer alive to communicate with about their wishes for how they would like to be buried, what they would like to do with their organs, their remains, What are their Wi-Fi passwords? What are the passwords to their bank accounts? How would they like their money distributed? Is their will in order? What is going to happen to their belongings, their home? Do they own property? The list goes on. I interviewed Liz Lantern, the CEO. I just called her Liz Lantern. That's a cute name, but that's actually not her name. I interviewed Liz Eddy, the CEO of Lantern, a few episodes back. So you can also learn more about that site and you'll just fall in love with her and how organized she is about this huge business she has created. Just a little background. She did lose her father in elementary school, but specifically it was two years ago when she lost her grandmother that she was inspired to take on this business. She has her master's from Columbia. She's absolutely brilliant. And it was the fact that she was so together and her family was so together. And they had such a long time to plan for the loss of her grandmother. And yet when her grandmother died, there were so many details. And she found that navigating the chaos just was not as organized as it could have been. So she's helping all of us stay more organized with these absolutely free checklists. I made an account. I started filling things out about my own wishes for my future when I am no longer here, which may seem bizarre as I am currently in my 20s. Well, at the end of my 20s, but we'll go with 20s for today and how I want things to be when I'm no longer here. I definitely casually was like, I mean, if you if anyone feels inspired to write a movie about me, no pressure. I definitely had a I had an interesting time. I had feelings come up. It it is challenging. It is a big deal. It's not something that you can just snap your fingers and feel comfortable with doing. However, life is awkward, as we know from my opinions on the podcast, from the trailer of my podcast. I think life is awkward and strange, and the only way out is through. Hopefully we can go through this together, make it a little bit less weird. All right. Well, thank you so much for anyone listening. I I always do want to try and make this better. I want to connect with more of you. If you have feedback about the kinds of episodes you would like to see, please shoot me a message at dyingoflaughter underscore podcast on Instagram, or that's dyingoflaughterpodcast at gmail.com. If you like what you're listening to, leaving a review on iTunes is super helpful as it helps other people find the podcast. So just a few sentences about what you've liked so far or giving it a rating of hopefully five stars if you like it is very, very helpful and appreciated as always. And again, please reach out if you have things that you would like to see covered. I have some things in mind of some people I've spoken with or messaged the past couple weeks as to how I would like to show up in the fall 
for you guys because this is really about serving other people and hopefully bringing stories that are similar to your own. Although every loss is different, there is a universality in struggle and grief, and hopefully we can connect those dots to get through this stuff together, right? Well, again, happy Friday if you're listening today. Hopefully you can enjoy the weekend in some small way. I I know we're still in a pandemic and there's a lot of heartache and hardship. If you're feeling really stressed out or just at a completely low point or just even feeling the numbness of not even necessarily letting pain sink in, some people are feeling numb, identifying and understanding that that's completely normal is the first step. I have felt sad. I have felt numb. I have felt all the things. I've even been listening to some podcasts where everyone still feels so happy. And I'm like, are they okay? Like, what's going on? So, no, I'm not always okay at all. No, you're not either. Try to enjoy the weekend a little bit. You deserve it. You're